The fate of many of the Labor's budget policies will be decided based on the verdict and votes from these Senate crossbenchers. Joining me here at the desk, let's introduce you now to the Senators who can make or break the budget. Independent Senator David Pocock, Green Senator and Finance Spokesperson Barbara Pocock, Senator Jackie Lambie and One Nation's Malcolm Roberts. Great to see you all. Thanks for being here. Jackie Lambie, what did you think? Um, I call it the Band-Aid budget because that's exactly what it is. It's not going very far and I don't think it's going to do a goddamn thing for the economy. I am really disappointed. I don't think I heard the word age pensioner or seen it once in the budget. And if I did, I must have just missed it because seriously, those guys are doing it really tough. I still can't understand or comprehend why they can't get their age pension and we have a year or two years if they want to go out and work and work 20 or 40 hours a week to top themselves up for the rest of their lives because these guys don't have as much super as what we do, why we can't do things like that. I'm terribly worried there was bugger all in there for mental health, bugger all in there whatsoever, either youth or adult. There is nothing about youth crime. It is a big thing in this country. They're not even talking about it. They don't want to touch it. The TAFEs. You want to put, what was it, 20,000 20, new TAFE places? Well, how about you come and get the asbestos out of my TAFE first, at first and the World War II or the cold era equipment that we have down there that you have never, ever replaced. Nobody's going in there to a TAFE on to learn on that equipment, mate. I mean, yeah. that's just a starter. I'll let the other guys have a talk, but seriously. Yeah, OK. No, it's good uh, Band-Aid budget from Jackie Lambie, Senator Pocock. Uh, it's a $300 energy rebate going to everyone. Is that fair? Billionaires get it, along with someone sitting on, on JobSeeker. I think it's a budget that delivers a lot for some people. If you're a defence contractor, if you're a fossil fuel company that needs some assistance with your fuel costs, big subsidies for property investors. But if you're sitting on JobSeeker, if you're looking for public services, if you are in the NDIS system, a big cut there. And if you're a renter, a tiny... A, a, a very, very marginal improvement for a small number of renters. And we have a, rent, a rental crisis, a housing crisis. We've got a women's crisis. If you look at the spending in the budget for women, where is the $1 billion that women, frontline women service providers tell us we need to deal with the domestic violent crisis? It's not there. So there's a lot missing uh, and there's a lot of spending going to the big end of town. Senator Roberts, your thoughts on this? Is it, is it a fair budget? No, it's not. It's not an honest budget. It's a budget that's trying to look good, not do good. Uh, it's just a charade. I agree pretty much with what Jackie said. Uh, if you look at inflation, we all know that subsidies, and that's essentially what, a, what a, a rent assist is and what energy relief bills are, they're subsidies. When you introduce subsidies, the, the seller raises prices because they know that the, the buyer is getting subsidies. So the Commonwealth Bank said that the uh, energy relief and the, and the rent assist is worth about 0.75% on the uh, inflation index, CPI index. So that raises two questions. That means inflation is still going to be high. And what's going to ha happen to people when we come off the rent assist and the energy relief? It's going to be catastrophic. You've been calling for rental assistance. Did they go far enough, in your view? <laughs> they went far enough. You know, there are so many Australians genuinely doing it tough, making decisions like, do I eat or do I go and fulfil that script? at the pharmacy. There's not much in this budget for them. We saw expert advice saying we need to raise social security payments and that won't be inflationary. They've chosen not to do that. I think to their credit, Future Made in Australia shows some ambition when it comes to critical minerals and hydrogen. But outside of that, I think they've kind of sprinkled things around and haven't really tackled any of the root causes of so many of the massive issues that we're, we're facing. I think most Australians are wanting a government that is going to actually tackle things like uh, the intergenerational you know, inequality that we're seeing through housing, through ballooning uh, hex debts. They've kind of picked some of the, the low-hanging fruit but haven't, haven't gone anywhere near to addressing it. Is part of that 